We superstar, <laughs> clerk, administrator, and Jimmy Chat. Yeah. Well, okay, we've got one minute. It is on and recording. Oh, and let's, we'll get started. <laughs> I will call this meeting Senate <laughs> County Commissioners for order for Thursday, October 14th. Uh, let us begin. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Who has prayer today, someone? You got it? Go to it. Your thoughts together. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of the community. Fill us with grace, Lord, as we make decisions that might affect the citizens of our county. Continue to remind us that all we do here today and all we accomplish uh, to pursue the truth for the greater glory of you. Uh, and to also serve uh, our community and humanity. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, are we okay? No, so we got to go into the meeting. Roll call, first of all, I guess. Let's get that done. Commissioner Kirshner. I am here. Commissioner Pettiso. Here. Commissioner Shaw. Here. Okay. Uh, so I also accept the motion to approve the audio, video, digital recording of the meeting session from last Thursday, the 7th. So moved. And I'll second that. Thank you. No additional discussion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Okay. Uh, so the first uh, item on the agenda is county administrator's report. Uh, just a couple things. I'm going to go do a calendar again. Um, we were invited to the Christmas tree lighting on December 3rd at 5.15. I think um, two of you said you'll be able to be there. Um, so I let Deb know. I will be there as well. Okay. Oh, you one of the two. <laughs> Just for the record. Yeah. Okay. And I need I'll to go. ask, um, CCAO's winter conference is on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this year, uh, December 8th, 9th, and 10th. Is there, is it work with your schedule to move our board meeting to Tuesday and have it on Tuesday? That way, um, you guys can go if you choose to go. There's some topics I'd really like to go to. So, so that's December 6th. Uh, we'll get this Tuesday, Tuesday. 8th, 9th, and 10th. Yep. Yeah. But we'd want to move it to Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday the 14th. No, nope. well, 7th. Seven. Seven. There you go. Yeah. The 7th is a Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So December 7th. Uh, is that Pearl Harbor Day? Day. Does that work for you? I plan on going to conference. Okay, so we'll move our board yeah. session to Tuesday the 7th at 10. Okay, very okay. good. Uh, that's all I have. Okay, Commissioner Schaff, we'll let you begin today. Yeah, it's been a busy week. Thank you, President Kirshner. Um, we had a GLCAT meeting this weekend, um, or this week. Uh, it's Great Lakes Community Action Partnership. Um, also, uh, had an EMS meeting last Thursday, well attended there. Getting a lot of things ironed out. Doesn't always seem like we're making progress right away, but a lot of people got a lot of things off to their uh, off their chest, and we're working through those items one thing at a time. So um, doesn't always seem like progress, but uh, as long as we're communicating with each other moving forward, I think that's a step in the right direction. I uh, have the radio this morning on WTTF, giving a county update for the county corner. So I appreciate WTTF keeping our citizens informed on what's going on. Um, also, last week we had a ribbon cutting for five star maintenance, very well attended. What would you see, Audrey? 50, 60 people there, yeah. maybe more. Mm -hmm. Very well attended. <clears throat> Had a meeting with Amy Reinhardt last week, went over some downtown stuff. We have the uh, downtown, or not downtown summit, but the uh, Main Street yearly summit that'll be in Springfield next week, Tuesday through Wednesday. So I do plan on going down for that. Uh, it's nice to go down there and network with the other downtowns and see what they're doing, what works, what doesn't work. So uh, hopefully we'll bring some uh, education and knowledge back from that conference. And then uh, last thing I have is we are planning another Seneca County sweep for the uh, village of New Riggle. And that will be uh, this month on the 26th, which is a Tuesday, two o'clock. So uh, bring your brooms, come on out, enjoy this nice weather while we still have it. And we'll uh, 
try to clean up Newrig a little bit and lend a hand. So, does, so that, I, does that include a rib dinner afterwards? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, that, it does. Okay. On you? On TSEP. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. We'll just need an increased budget line for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Paradiso, what do you have for us? Yeah, so, one of the things I attended, uh, Mr. Brian Ball back there, I went to Big Springs Township meeting last night and I was informed that Newrigal is getting a family doctor. Really? Uh, going to locate to the village and set up shop there. And uh, obviously everyone's pretty excited about that. Pleasant Township, Old Fort, we had Doc Easton forever and that was really nice and convenient. So we wish that person well. Don't know when it's happening, but they've got a storefront and they were able to pick out. That'd be good. Um, received a invite for Veteran of the Year. Uh, three of us this morning. Uh, Stace, like to make sure we have a proclamation prepared. Yeah. Uh, in action we're working for that. on it. Okay. Yep. Uh, November 10th, uh, we'll be attending that dinner. Um, and uh, just a, a, another comment on the EMS meeting. Uh, Mr. Schaff, I think uh, this next meeting will be uh, a pivotal. We're going to pivot at the next meeting. Hi, Mayor. Uh, we, we've, we've had a lot of what ifs, and I think it's time now that uh, we uh, take it to the next step. So we're looking forward to uh, uh, decisions as we go around the room with that meeting of all those that want to continue to go forward and then I think we're going to start really rolling our sleeves up I can and dig into uh, all the details of what this would look like looking forward to that and so I think we're more than ready uh, and that will occur next uh, meeting so I'll just leave it that and more to come Mr. back to you Okay, well, one of the things I wanted to highlight, I don't think anybody's here for this, I talked to maybe, a, uh, they're going to do Seneca County military tribute banners. They're not going to actually go up until uh, uh, May through September of 22, but there's an opportunity for uh, whether it be your brother or your uncle or your dad or your child who was a military member to have a banner. It's going to be in, all the way through downtown Tiffin um, and the side streets. Hopefully they'll be so many of them. Uh, they have a number of dates that you can bring the information, hopefully with a picture and whatever medals they may have earned um, and the date of death, if that's appropriate. Um, uh, so that will uh, that will occur a few dates, uh, November 8th, November 13th, January 10th, at the library to be able to bring the information in. So I, I think it's a great project. Uh, it's 150 bucks if you want to sponsor a banner. You don't need to sponsor one if you bring a name in, but if you'd like to sponsor one, it's 150 bucks. And again, they will be displayed from May through September of 22. I don't know if anybody's driven through Oak Harbor lately, but uh, if you do, you'll see my, those banners of uh, uh, soldiers that were uh, part of the military in the past. And I think it's, it's, it's a real nice trip. So... Uh, we get fully behind this and uh, and fill out the polls with uh, men and women who served our country, right? Uh, we had a, I know last night was candidates night. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's still recorded for anybody that wants to go back and look at it. Uh, we'll post on our website or ask Jimmy to post that link so that if you wish to look at it through the League of Women Voters, you can do that. We kind of had a mini candidates night with the Republican Party Tuesday, uh, asked similar questions, and I'm sure we got similar answers. Uh, but we interviewed uh, all the city council candidates and all the uh, Tiffin City Board of Education candidates. So these all all these men and women have been through the questioning period. Uh, tomorrow night is. Uh, Chicks with hits at the Ritz. So uh, Pam Tillis is the one I remember most. But anyway, so uh, for those of you who are looking for something to do, there are a few seats left for that. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to be able to get together with a bunch of folks again and enjoy uh, some event. And that, that's happening tomorrow night. Uh, 
I too was at the ribbon cutting for a uh, five-star maintenance. What a great place. Uh, you know, a true entrepreneurial story a guy that starts out with a pickup truck and now he's got a number of employees and he's out there doing good stuff. So God bless him and his company. And, and we have, it seems Audrey, uh, one or two of those kinds of things every week. So that's very, very exciting. We try to get to as many of them as we can. Uh, that ends what I have to say. Uh, we are going to try to get to an executive session by 1030. Uh, end of the end of the session is fine. End of the session. Okay. Yep. So uh, do, do we have any five, other? Any other? Five. five. Executive. We'll go into executive and go in the back room. Okay. okay. Any good. other? Any other old business, uh, gentlemen? Stacy. Nope. Okay. Let's go right into new business then. Okay. I have a supplemental appropriation for our uh, coronavirus relief fund. Um, we had to close up a couple purchase orders from 2020. So we need to reappropriate them to get that closed out. Um, Julie, Julie and I have talked, we wanna to try to get that closed out and um, done by the end of this month. This is obviously the one from last year, not the ARP fund. So we need to reappropriate $2,546.47 into the supply line. And then I have a request from uh, uh, the sheriff's office they need to put fourteen thousand dollars into their uh, TCAP contract services line. Uh, this is for the electronic monitoring and post phone service. Um, I have a supplemental appropriation into our capital improvements uh, airport line for eight hundred thousand. Um, that's all the money that we're going to get for the project that we've accepted the bid for. It was about seven hundred thousand and. Figure we may have some um, things that we need to prepare so for. Yeah. So we front the money. Yes, and right. we'll get reimbursed. That's what this is. And then the feds pay us back. Yeah, and it's usually pretty quick. Yeah. It's usually pretty quick. Okay, so, so it's just yep. in and out. And yep. If there's any money left unused, what happens to it? We just reduce it and it stays in the fund. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so if it doesn't, we're moving eight hundred in. Yep. Unless um, then they we get uh, we owe seven hundred sixty. Right. Forty stays in there. Yeah, I mean, and so if we don't collect it, we don't collect it. Obviously, if these are just the appropriations. So when yeah, the cash comes back in, so, I understand. It, so it, in it, the end, yeah, it, uh, it's still dollar for dollar. Yep. Okay. Yep. I got it. Thanks. Uh, then I have a request from the engineer's office um, asking for an additional 5,000 in their gasoline line. Also a request from the engineer, engineer's office uh, for an additional 60,000 in their diesel fuel line. This is all in the MNR fund. That's all the stuff apps I have. Um, resolution authorizing a fund advance repayment from the Wolf Creek Ditch Fund. Um, as you know, we did that five years ago and uh, four years ago. So the citizens are paying back every year. So we've got $8,883.86 to be returned back to the general fund this year. Uh, then I have a resolution authorizing the purchase of the 2022 Wheel Coach 170 inch model Ford F450. Uh, through the Ohio Department of Administrative Services Cooperative Purchasing Program for local vendor and the bidding on behalf of Seneca County EMS. That's an ambulance, basically. Yep. Yes, yep. Uh, the total for that, I think we talked about that last time, but it's $226,665. I have another question. So when you get when it's Cooperative Purchasing Program? Yes. So for the listeners, that's... We don't bet at the state or state negotiate the prices. Yep. Okay. So in the past, well, do we always put that language in there? If or it's not in the title, it's at least usually in the I'm not resolution. Sure that before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mr. Brightwell, we learned something. So, um, <laughs> so instead of everyone in the state bidding for those vehicles, the state does it for us. Just order it and we'll get that state price and that's what the, that means yeah yep. okay hey i'm just keeping me and you on <laughs> yeah good thank you 
Um, I have a resolution authorizing a memorandum of agreement for deposit of public funds with Old Fort Bank on behalf of the Seneca County Clerk of Courts. This goes from October 16, 2021 to October 16, 2025. And then I have a resolution setting time, date, and place to have a public hearing to designate the restricted areas to prohibit the construction of any economically significant wind farms, large wind farms, or large solar facilities throughout the unincorporated areas of the county as outlined in Senate Bill 52. Uh, the hearing will be set for November 18th, 2021 here at the commissioner's office at 11 a.m. Very good. There I do go. have a map that uh, I don't know if you want to just look at it quickly. I think I sent it to you. Okay, so there's been a bunch of chatter about Senate Bill 52. Uh, some, at least a couple of counties that I'm aware of have already uh, uh, pass some resolutions as it relates to that Delaware County being one of them. But you know, we all, we were advised that we shouldn't hold the hearing until it took effect. It has taken effect. We are now uh, setting the hearing date and uh, our so what was the hearing date. And excuse me, November eighth. November eighteenth. Eighteenth at eleven. Because we okay. have to wait That's for board meeting. thirty okay. days. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got it. I thought you said ten. Yeah. So. Oh no. Okay. 18th. Sorry. And so this is the map that uh, uh, the auditor's office GIS put together. Uh, you had asked me to get basically it's prohibiting all areas that are in the uh, unincorporated. The ones in gray are obviously the incorporated areas that we, we do not have authority over. So, so this map I'll have to take down to the public library and post it along with our resolution setting the time and date. And I have to mail out first class mail notices to all the school districts, all the um, uh, neighboring. Authority. Yep. Yeah. So um, we'll make sure that's that's so Mayor, we could put one of those 600 footers right in the middle of your village here. Right house. We can't. <laughs> we have no say over. <laughs> this, okay, that's good. Okay. So that's uh, all I have. Nope. Uh, your pleasure, gentlemen. No. Chat. Like like to make a motion that we accept the new business and uh, pass the resolutions as presented. Thank you. I'll second that. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, uh, Stacy, roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Chef? Yes. Commissioner Cardizo? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Okay, so we are going to go into executive session for personnel and property eventually here. But first, um, we'll open it up for public comment. Uh, we'll start out with Audrey. Bring us up to date on what's going on in your world. Yeah, I only have a couple of brief things today. I just wanted to make sure I'm keeping in front of you with uh, the Dream Big Tiffin uh, submission for proposals and ideas closes a week from yesterday, uh, next Wednesday, the 20th. Uh, so make sure if there's ideas or, or plans or things you want to see improved in the community within city limits, submit to that um, program. That's dreambigtiffin.com. Also just want to remind you that that entrepreneurship survey, which again is open to everyone, not just business owners and entrepreneurs, we want to get a, a full general feel. Please fill that out. It's very brief. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes. That's at tsepsurvey.com. And that's open through uh, the 25th. So a couple more weeks, but really want to get good turnout there. Um, we also are holding a number of focus groups um, and interviews with individuals. So if you have things you want to share to make our plan better directly with us on entrepreneurship and how we can better support small business owners and their startups, please reach out to me. We would love to hear from you. Um, if you have specific experience or background in that, your experience is very helpful for us as we put this plan together. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, Arlington Acres, which is an awesome rural business um, over in Hopewell Township, uh, had their ribbon cutting this week, and we've been working with them for quite a while. So they're officially open and uh, booking for next uh, next season's wedding. So very happy for them. Um, and then just a reminder also that we are still recruiting companies to uh, submit their um, for our RFP for the Rural Broadband Task Force to help us put a plan together for the broadband. Um, David has been working hard recruiting. Charlene's been helping as well um, to try to get companies to submit for that to get what we want. So um, if you know any entities or individuals who have that uh, capacity, will you send them our way? I think that's all I've got. Do you guys have any questions for us today? Keep up the good work. 
Dream Big, does that have some potential um, grant funding involved with that as well? So the so program itself is not a grant. So all of the projects that are submitted, we prioritize and rank them all. And the ones that are um, ranked as high priorities uh, through community input and uh, input from the city and a committee and the whole process, we will seek out grant funds to make those top projects happen and move them forward. Okay, so but there's no specific. Correct. They don't get a check written wow. from that. Right. We are. It's on behalf of the city to move their community development forward. We're identifying the projects that exist and then helping to move them forward in gotcha. whatever way that might look like. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, yes, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, Queen, Queen Street, Queen Tyler. So whatever date works for you, can just define what date works for you and your group, and okay. I'll, I'll adjust to it. And then is there a something like dumpster or something that I'm trying to understand? I, so when waste solutions what they'll do is they'll provide us like with a free roll off so if yeah. citizens or people out in Bettsville if they have stuff gathered in the backyard or front porch or furniture okay. they can bring those items down and throw them away at no cost okay so I'll put that on the website I just want to make sure I understood what the, the criteria was and then whatever date works for you just let me know and I'll, I'll get everything posted and it's I was going to say, if you stick around for the main, I can call you or we can get together towards and set a date because okay, uh, you guys are the final stop here for the season. Then we'll start again in the spring. That's from last. And, and the other thing for JLB, I just wanted to, we want to do, do, do directly with the county as far as payment stuff. We don't want to go through a, a third party or whatever. So we'll keep everything nice and clean. So we had a discussion okay. last night. So as we get more into this, I just want you guys to understand our position. We're, we're all in, but we want to make sure we do directly with you guys so we get the payments. We don't let us get money for whatever. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate your leadership. Yeah. And uh, what can you, what uh, I read, uh, there's a big 160 acre reserve. Yes. Or, okay. Yes. And that's, can you tell me what that is real quick? Oh, basically, it's, it's, it's the farm it's, ground on Crip Road. You're basically that they're coming in as a natural park, I guess, I understand for uh, wetlands or whatever. Mm -hmm. I used to farm that years ago. So it's a. Uh, okay. So it has nothing town. to do with basic or. No, no. Or, it's outside of town. That's it's, a it's, new. Yes. Yeah, that, that was an interesting article. Yeah, it's also a town about three miles away. <laughs> nice. Township over 36. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. What jurisdiction over that? Will it be the park district or will that be? Sounds like a park district. I read the article correct. It actually goes, yeah, it goes because it's administered through the Black Swamp to get the funding, and then Black Swamp will turn it over to the uh, park system. Mm -hmm. so the steps, uh, they go up and Yes, yeah, nice amenities over here. Yeah, right. it's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah, good. Thank you. Okay, yes, Thanks for coming, Lou. If I could just add, anybody looking for a fun time for either their children or their grandchildren, we have food in the park. Um, it's an exciting event in the back. It's at the part of the Tennessee County Park District. There's a park behind our building. It's a nice walking path for little kids. So if you want to bring your children, you're really welcome to. Uh, we also have, I think it's next Thursday, or the following Thursday, um, Nights and Lights, all the local schools are donating and doing um, little jack-o'-lanterns. And we're going to, we lit them up last year, but we'll light them up on the outside of our building. And it's a nice drive-through for, for folks and the ch uh, children for Halloween. Thanks. And Lou, on the 19th, there's a ribbon cutting for the Opportunity Park? Yeah. Okay. And that's for the new rickshaw? Yeah. That we work with uh, Cycling Without Age um, yeah, no, to get a grant mm -hmm. through Tip and Charitable Foundation for an electronic rickshaw for our folks. And the oh, hopes yeah. are that our folks could use it and then other folks that want to come use it, that, or that they can arrange it through Cycling Without Age. Our hopes is to build it, to build a shed out back that will house the bike and then it'll have a security code for the drivers, the volunteers that have been trained. To utilize the rickshaw. It's a really nice bike, very expensive, but very, very nice bike. But it was uh, thanks to uh, the Charitable Foundation, we were able to get it. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Uh, keep us on your list. I know Marta on your activities list. I can invite you. This great. I can't, I'll be out of town this afternoon, so I can't make it. Uh, thanks. You're doing great stuff. Keep it up. Anything else? Um, I had asked, uh, I think Mike Ditto's on. He had uh, contacted me last week talking about um, this new surprise building. It's not new, but it's kind of first time we're hearing about it. So um, 
I apologize. I don't know how to get his face up there. I think I kind of see it, but uh, Jimmy's our I, pro at this. Yeah. So. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Hi, Brad. We do see you up here at the top, Mike. So. Okay, good, good. We're here. We're here. Thanks, thanks for the time. <laughs> I appreciate it, Stacey. And um, what we wanted to just sort of uh, brief you on, uh, as you know, we, we talked about the capital budget and other things that are coming up. But uh, one thing uh, that has come up just in the last week or so is an issue dealing with surprise medical billing. So just to give you a little bit of quick history, uh, back in the last General Assembly, uh, House Bill 388 uh, passed uh, really in kind of the 11th hour before the General Assembly came to a close. Uh, in December of last year, and it prohibits patients from receiving certain types of surprise bills when they receive medical care. Uh, one of the, and obviously that that mostly applies to hospitals and uh, care that you may receive there. One of the people, one of the groups that tried uh, in earnest to be exempted from that were EMS services. Obviously, uh, you don't expect to ever call for an ambulance service anywhere that you live in Ohio. Um, so they wanted to be exempted from that because they're sort of the definition of surprise billing and you can't run through with the patient the cost uh, that they're going to receive when they're getting critical care at a moment's notice. Um, at the same time that all this was happening in Ohio, federal legislation was also happening dealing with surprise billing. And that legislation exempted EMS, but the state legislation did not. And what, and really, truly, um, the, the main groups um, that would represent uh, local governments, the Ohio Township Association, the Ohio County Commissioners Association, and the Ohio Municipal League, um, weren't really taking a stance on this issue at the time because it was believed that the federal legislation would cover a lot of ground on surprise billing. That ended up not happening. And so what the net effect has been, what they've discovered in the last just couple of weeks has been that the way this legislation is written when it takes effect on January 1st, it because it prohibits surprise billing on patients and EMS is still included, local governments may be able to uh, cover that cost. Uh, and that could put a serious hole in, in people's budgets unexpectedly. So what some of these advocates are doing, the Ohio Township Association has already weighed in. They are seeking an amendment to a, a bill pending in the General Assembly now that would delay the implementation of surprise billing for EMS only by one year. So uh, all parties can get together and try and figure this out. Uh, the County Commissioners Association, I believe, is going to be briefed on this as soon as next week. And the same is true for the Ohio Municipal League. Um, so Stacy has uh, sort of a lengthy <laughs> memo that we put together in consultation with some of our partners here in Columbus who are following that. Did not want you to be caught off guard and, and didn't know, Stacy, if uh, your folks locally had had any feedback on it uh, since you and I talked last week. Yeah, I've talked to Ken about it at length and I think he's going down to the EMS. Uh, we successfully got <laughs> placed on the EMS agenda for the state board of EMS to discuss it because it is a surprise to us. We thought, and I spoke to Jim Jordan personally about that, uh, to discuss whether that federal legislation was going to prohibit or exempt EMS. And at the time right. I spoke to him, which was several months ago now, he believed that it was. Um, so we're gonna talk about it in the rural EMS committee and we're also talking to the state board, but I don't think we're gonna stop it unless there's some sort of federal or maybe the lobbyists in Columbus or Washington can do something to exempt us before January 1. And that's, that's really the hope. Um, that's why the groups who represent the EMS uh, folks and some others are, are contacting uh, those like Highbridge who have a local government client um, to, to push for that amendment just to delay uh, EMS surprise billing changes past January 1 for one year until January 1st of, of 2023, just so this can get figured out. Because I think you're right um, that the, the complicating factor is the fact that federal legislation was happening at the time the state was passing something, uh, and that there are many groups that argued that the state should not even be passing this surprise billing legislation at the time because the feds were doing something. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of convolution uh, there and a lot of complicating factors, but we wanted to alert you to it and we are happy to advocate for that delay on your behalf if it makes sense, if it will impact you. And um, we're gonna continue to have some meetings on it here for you just to, just to see where it lands. You want, uh, would it be good for us to um, 
do something to formalize our objection to EMS? I mean, a resolution us to our legislators? It would. I would. I think that would be very, very impactful. Um, and I, I think whether that is a letter or resolution passed by the commission uh, urging the adoption of this amendment to delay, uh, I think all of that is quite impactful. So we'll put it together with Ken and Stacey. We'll put something together and, uh, uh, and get it signed uh, later in the next week. Yeah, whatever That's you can great. do for us, obviously. You got That's it. Right. Make the good fight, Mr. Ditto. Yes, sir, as always. Yes, so if we get a, your extension, yes, then we can. Right, and this goes it. back to the discussion we've all had previously about the EMS being a central service in the national level or the state level. And since it's not, I think it convoluted the issue at the state and national level where they didn't know whose problem it was. So the ball ended up slipping through their hands and they fumbled at the one yard line. And here we are. Yeah. That's, you could not have said it better. Could not agree more. That's a great analysis. We'll put that in the resolution. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Of course. Uh, anything, any other comments? Uh, like, can you tell if there's anybody out there that wants to make a comment? Uh, if there's anybody out there, you can unmute yourself. Um, come forward now. And if you're on the phone line, it's star six. You know, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yep. Let's see anybody <clears throat> unmuting. Okay. Back row, anything to add back there, boys? Well, Stace, one one final comment by you before we adjourn on the budget process. Oh. So this is we're getting compressed with our time. So the next couple of weeks it should be pretty intense, right? Yeah. As far as getting all this accounted. So you might want to just lay out your vision of the next two, three weeks. Sure. It's gonna play out because we're off the last week, right? Right. Okay, so. So, um, and actually today for one o'clock, um, we didn't have anybody scheduled. So I'm guessing once we get through executive session and adjourn, because I asked them to schedule if they were coming in at one, not just come in at one if you have something to talk about. So nobody scheduled. So we could probably just adjourn after our executive session today. Um, we have uh, three departments scheduled for next week. Budgets are actually due to be submitted into um, VIP by the 22nd next Friday. So, um, and we have another hearing on November 4th. So we will, I will start getting you reports, obviously spending what we've got so far this year, start getting you copies of what people have submitted in the system so far. And, you know, if you want to do work session to go over some of it after all this, um, we can do that. But um, I'm just kind of waiting until the 22nd to see what everybody's got in. And then because they still may put something in the system that's more than what we expect. So then we will obviously call them in um, for a hearing. So we'll, uh, when does Budget Commission meet? Budget Commission meets next week, the 19th. Okay. I think so we'll have at least we'll yep it was due revenue was due on the 12th so it would have been due Tuesday um and uh they are meeting at the 19th at nine o'clock so Mike will that be the final yeah, one they will probably sure official number at that point or okay. at least have that conversation okay we'll have a good idea as to what that number will be yeah that's you know the revenue side of the budget so uh next week we're we're meeting at noon yes instead of 10. right uh, we've been invited to speak at calvert so uh, all three of us so we're going to go over there in the morning and um looking forward to it. it's pretty intense we, we're going to talk about this and so we can't roasted. just be politicians, Bill. We have to prepare a little bit. We're going to get roasted by a bunch of ninth graders. Yeah, so it, it, it should be a nice event, and then uh, we'll be here at noon, and then we'll go right in. I'm real familiar with where the principal's office is. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the same spot. That's, that's exactly right. So well, we'll start at noon and go right into our hearings. Mm -hmm. and, the, and those three that are going to speak at the hearing, we will get their budgets in advance of the hearing. Yes. Yep. So even though they're not due until Friday, if you want to come to the budget here, you have to get your exam yep. before Friday. Yep. Okay. okay, so I'll accept the motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel and property acquisition. 
I'll make the motion that we uh, go into executive session to discuss personnel and property acquisition. Uh, second, it's 1034. Stacy, roll call, please. Uh, yes. Mr. Schiff? Yes. Commissioner Perdizo? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. We do not expect to have any um, decisions coming out of executive session, but you're welcome to stay if you wish. We'll be back there a while and come back and then uh, adjourn. Thank you all for coming.